Hey, you guys, gals, and bums. Welcome back to a few bad men. All right, today, I just want to give you guys a little something, a little surprise for the boss to let you guys know that I care about you and I think about you. All right, so I know it's a, it's a, this is a guy that I've been looking for for a long time. All right, and I finally got enough information to do a short little video on this guy because this guy is not easy to find. He was one of those guys that stayed under the radar. All right, he did his job effectively and he wasn't in the newspapers. He wasn't flashy, but it, but he was one of the most effective killers at the time. Uh, Murder Incorporated, Bug and Maya Gang, you name it. He was a shooter, all right? I'm talking about Samuel Red Levine. But before we get into this, all right, all you news guys out there, all you guys don't have your button. You ain't made yet. There's a guy running around. You want to make your button? There's a guy running around. His name is Ryby. Sus Scribe. All right. I need to. I need you guys to help him stop breathing. All right. He needs to take a ride. He needs a dirt nap. All right. So make sure you go down there and you bump off that guy. Subscribe. All right. And and you break those. Break that thumb off. Okay. Let's get into it. Now, Lucky Luciano once called this guy the best driver and hitman he ever had. Red was an anomaly in the underworld, right? Because he was a devoted Orthodox Jew. He always wore a yarmulke or a skull cap under his fedora. All right. Now, despite being a cool and calculated professional killer, he was deeply religious. He was devoted to his wife and his kids and kept a kosher home out in Brooklyn. He had one request though, when it came to taking contracts. Whenever possible, he tried not to kill anybody on the Sabbath. But if he didn't have no choice and some bum had to take a ride on a Friday evening or a Saturday, he would put on a talent or, or, or prayer shawl over his shoulders and pray. But somehow Red was able to balance his faith and his profession. Samuel Levine was born in Toledo, Ohio on December 27th 1902 to a Jewish family. While he was still young, they moved to Houston Street in the Lower East Side, where a young, impressionable Sam started making new friends a few blocks over on Grand Street. And these kids would go on to play a major role in his life, and they played a huge role in the formation of the National Syndicate. There were young Jewish kids like him, bored with school, and the streets of the Lower East Side was the perfect diversion for it. They formed an early bond, a gang of kids who looked out for each other. They gave each other nicknames in an effort to gain a little bit of gang affinity for each other. Red was the obvious choice for Sam, the freckle-faced redhead kid from Toledo. Now these boys really needed to look out for each other because a walk through their neighborhood was not always a safe one. Now, because the Irish kids would pick on the Jewish kids all the time, calling them names, shoving them, spitting on them, and embarrassing them by pulling down their pants to see if they were actually were circumcised. The Italian kids from a few streets over were not any friendly. Now, some of, some of his new friends included little Benny Siegel, who they called Bugsy behind his back due to his hot-headed nature. Ben was a big kid good guy to have on your side when things got tough but one of them a little guy named Maya seemed to be able to control him for some reason when he was 15 Red lied about his age to join the Navy in 1917 during World War I although he never saw combat he was bullied by fellow sailors for his red hair and for being Jewish so when his ship docked in Panama he jumped ship and returned to New York by the late 20s Red was working with the Bug and Maya gang and doing hits, escorting liquor shipments, as well as loaning his trigger finger out to other gangsters. All right, so from what I gathered, these Jewish gangsters in, in New York in the 20s, they all intermingled. All right, a gangster could work or do business, work for or do business with one or more gangs. They would loan shooters to each other so they would be less recognizable to the bum on the spot. Right. For instance, Pretty Amberg was from Brooklyn 
and had his own Shylock business going on with his brother, among other things. But he still came on as a hired gun for Dutch Schultz when Dutch was at war with the Mad Mick, Vincent Cole. Right. Later on in the 30s, Red would be Pretty's partner over in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. So here's one thing I've always wondered. Why a bug and my torpedo will be teamed up with a Dutch Schultz goon to pull off the biggest, most influential hit in the history of the syndicate. Now, now I'm not going to get into too much of this, you know, because, because you know, you already know why. Because when I start to do the Castle Marese War, it's going to be epic. All right. I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to tell you everybody, everybody's going to have their own bio. And then I'm going to wrap it all up. In, in a couple episodes of the war itself so just stay tuned all right that's why i haven't done any italian gangsters because i'm trying to keep it they, they're kind of all intertwined you understand all right so so i always wondered why you would have two guys that were in two different gangs you would think that you would want some some guys that uh work together to, to pull off a big hit like this all right but anyway, maybe they worked together with Dutch, is what I was trying to say. Maybe they worked together with Dutch back in the, in the 30s, you know. Red was running around, loaning his gun out. But anyway, on September 10th, 1931, Red, Levine, and Bo Weinberg, under the orders of Lucky Luciano, entered into the office of one Salvatore Marizano, dressed as federal agents under the guise of an audit. They got in the Marizano's office and as they were frisking him, they pinned him to the wall and stabbed him four times in the chest, the stomach and the mouth, slicing his cheek before shooting him. Like other alumni from the Bug and Meyer gang, when the syndicate was born, Red became a member of the crew of killers in Brooklyn that the press would later dub Murder Incorporated. Now, Red had a long-standing rivalry with fellow Murder Incorporated hitman, Charlie the Bug Workman who also went back and forth between Lepke's mob and the Bug and Meyer gang. He was irritated that Workman took most of the murder contracts that would have otherwise gone to him. Red once complained that anytime I got a contract, Charlie's around to do the killing. But Charlie wasn't around on October 25th, 1935. Early on that morning, Red was waiting in the kitchen of a Williamsburg restaurant with Pittsburgh Phil Strauss for Mendy Weiss, a Louis Lepke goon to bring his partner Pretty Amberg in. When Pretty walked into the kitchen, Mendy grabbed him and someone hit him with an ax. And then they took their time carving up Pretty until they finally ended it with a shotgun. Now, to find out what Pretty did to deserve this, go check out my bio on him. I'll leave, I'll leave it a tag up there. All right. So in 1941, the Kid Twist spilled the beans on Murder Incorporated. And a lot of big names went down. Some to the electric chair, some got life, and the kid got tossed out of a window. But Red seems to have just slipped off the map, unscathed, because by the 40s, he had just faded into obscurity and was never heard from again in criminal circles. What we do know is as late as 1965-66, Red was on the payroll of the Zion Memorial Chapel for 200 a week. He was also involved in the NMDU, newspaper and mail deliverers union and played a major role well into his 70s. In his later years, Red spent time in the Little Italy district, frequenting the Naughty Pine Social Club, a known mafia hangout, operated by Genevieve's captain Peter DeFeo, as well as the Raven Knight Social Club, more commonly known in later years as the Raven Knight. Unlike most of the people who grew up with Red died peacefully on April 7th, 1972. All right, you guys, that is the skinny on one Red Levine, a guy I've been chasing down for a long time. It's really hard to get a lot of stuff on Red. So this is pretty much everything on Red. Now you guys know, all right? In case you guys were looking, this is what, the, this is what it is, all right? So I hope you guys enjoyed the story as much as I enjoyed telling it. Make sure you go down there and find that guy, Gribey. Subscribe him, all right? Go to go find him. Bump him off. Break that thumb, all right? Make sure you go down to the merch store. I'm going to leave it in the comments. 
Get yourself something nice. Get your girl something nice. Get your guy something nice. All right? This has been a few bad men. Keep your nose clean. And don't take any wood nickels. I see you in the funnies. <laughs>